next guest is known as the godmother of Silicon Valley. She is a legendary teacher and the mother of three superstar daughters. And she is here today with her new book, How to Raise Successful People. Please welcome to our home, Esther Wojcicki. Welcome, yeah. Esther. Well, I think we are more excited to so have excited. you here. We are honored. I mean, to, to write a book on how to raise successful people, I think, is an understatement for you because your three daughters, this is not an exaggeration, are superstars. One of your daughters is the CEO of YouTube. Another one of your daughters is um, the co-founder of the DNA company, 23andMe. Yes. And your other daughter is also uh, the director, uh, professor of pediatrics at UC San Fran. So to say that you raise successful people is really underselling yourself, to be completely <laughs> honest. And, and you said, you know, you did something very early to make sure that they were independent. What was that? What did you do and tell us? I know. <laughs> That's why I wrote the book. It's so exciting so I can help everybody else. So what I did, first of all, I really didn't know how to parent very well. I just thought I didn't like the parenting books out there. I didn't like what you know I had experienced personally. So I thought I'm going to create it myself. Why not? And so my number one goal, I had just one goal, and that was to make them as independent as possible mm -hmm. as early as possible. And so I did a lot of things to train them to be independent. So, you know, for example, it can be silly little things. Can you walk up and down the stairs by yourself? You know, how do you hold on? You know, uh, the other thing that I did was, well, we have a swimming pool in the backyard. And so I wanted to make sure there were no problems with the swimming pool. We always read about stories, you know, we don't want to read about. And so, like, in case you get close to the swimming pool and you shouldn't be there, I want to make sure that you can take good care of yourself. So I taught them all how to swim really early. So one of them actually learned to swim at 12 months. Wow. Oh my goodness. It turns out a 12 month old can swim. She had just learned to walk the month before and I was like, ah, perfect time, now you can learn to swim. And turns out little kids that learn to swim, they're not afraid of the, putting their head in the water. They don't know it's supposed to be dangerous. So right. they just do it automatically. She swam sort of like a little fish. She was always under the water and then she would sort of pop up and there was the air and then she'd go back down. And She swam from one end of the pool to the other, not one side of the pool, one end of the pool to the other. Wow. I said, ah, oh, that must be. So it's, sorry, it's like the opposite of helicopter parenting. It's like you. <laughs> terrifying to me. I know, I know. I feel like, and here I am, you're like, let him walk down the stairs by yourself. I carry my one-year-old and my three-year-old at the same time in the and morning Kevin. to go to, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> to go down the stairs. But I mean, your life, I mean, it truly reads like an adventure story. I mean, you were, you know, went from international reporter to Silicon Valley teacher of the year, such an incredible honor. And then you also founded the media arts program at Palo Alto High School. And I mean, this you've done so much. <laughs> and you created the teaching philosophy called TRIC. Now, yes. what does that acronym stand for? Okay, so TRIC. I did that so I could try to help all the parents and all the teachers. And this is actually the essence. It's in a lot of books, a lot of parenting books and a lot of corporate books. TRIC stands for trust, respect, independence, collaboration, and kindness. Mm -hmm. And I think that that belongs in everything. Number one thing you should do is build trust. Trust with your kid. Because when you trust them and when they feel like they're capable, then they are empowered. Mm -hmm. And when you're empowered and when you feel in control, you're happy. And you then have grit, you're willing to, oh yes, I can do that, and you know, I'm gonna try really hard to do it. And then if you respect them, you know, kids come up with really wacky ideas, I'm sure you know, yes? Yeah. Yeah. And so some of those ideas is, oh my God, I don't know if I can respect this one. But <laughs> let me tell you, sometimes it's worth doing. Right. And you know, one of the magazines one of my students created in 2000, Oh no, I think it was 2012, honestly. The main thing they wanted to do was to teach kids how to braid each other's hair. Okay, a magazine to braid hair? Okay. Really? Okay, you know, is, is that gonna be popular? You know, all the guys, they don't braid their hair, you know? <laughs> so 50% <laughs> of the student body isn't gonna read it. No, turns out it was the most popular magazine wow, of all. Everybody, whoa. so sh you know, my ideas are not as good as theirs, right? They get to do that. You're so right about that, though. Like fostering that kind of, if they have like an outlandish idea right. or that seems outlandish. Like I've always read that the entrepreneurs of tomorrow are the ones that today everybody thinks are crazy. Right. That's for sure. The entrepreneurs are the ones that don't follow the rules. Yes. The ones that come up with these wacky ideas and the ones you keep like, oh, let's give them, let's put them in a the corner over there. No, 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 no. 
encourage that. Encourage your kids yeah. to be that way. Instead of getting mad at them, say, have a discussion. Right. Talk with them. Say, like, so what is it that you, you know, are trying to do? Let's see if I can help you do that. I don't care. It could be a really crazy, you know. Right. I want to collect yeah. all the frogs in the house. No. Or, well, in the yard or wherever <laughs> they are. I'm not going to, anyway. But with, you didn't just do this at home. You also incorporated this into your teaching agenda mm -hmm. at school, and you got a lot of pushback. However, all that pushback turned into good because you just kept at it, and you, mm -hmm. you did not, you said, listen, this is how I'm going to teach, and it worked. And now so many other schools across the country are actually adapting and, and using your style of teaching. What would you say, and, and teaching, by the way, has changed dramatically mm -hmm. in the 21st century since since we came up. How have you personally changed teaching, would you say? Well, so when I first started, you know, I had to be a regular teacher. You know, they force it on you, right? You learn this stuff in the School of Education and you're like, okay, you stand up there and you lecture and now you, all those kids have to take notes and be quiet and everything else. And I was like, uh-oh, this is not working. All those kids, they seem to be like super bored and they're not learning anything. So um, I changed that. And I made a lot in collaborative learning you know, peer-to-peer -peer stuff. Kids learn the most from each other. So I set up a whole program where that was all collaborative. Kids were in charge, they were working together. I still gave lectures, but very short ones, like 15 minutes, that's enough. You know, no one wants to listen to you any longer anyway. So <laughs> that was it. And today, my teaching has changed dramatically because now I use the internet to support my teaching. Right. You wanna know about something? Hey guys, go online and see if you can find it. And not only that, you can teach me how to do it, and then you can teach your friends how to do it. So, so giving them responsibility is yeah. key. Well, that's right, because actually I'm not going to go with them to college, and neither are their parents. So if you can be as independent as possible and feel confident, you're going to do pretty well, yeah. no matter what you're doing. And right? So that's my goal, and that's what happens in the program. And I have seven other teachers in the program now, and they're all doing the same thing. So, Great. you know, it can be, all teachers can do that. Well, they're know? doing it across the country, they're and you led the way. <laughs> yes, and by having right. kids teach, it's just what a way to create a leader, you yeah, know? I just, right. I love that so, so much. And over your 30 years of teaching, you have had over 8,000 students, and one of those students just happens to be James Franco, oh, yes. who has called you his hero. That's gotta feel pretty yeah, good. Yeah, so actually, I love James Franco. Aww. He's a, such a great person, and let me just tell you that he was also very gifted in math. Can you believe? He's a very oh. talented guy. And so he had to pick what he wanted to do, you know, and, oh, math sounds really good and traditional, right? But he decided he wanted to be an actor. Wow. And, you know, so one of the things he said is that he was really grateful that I believed in his dreams as much as he did. I believed that he could achieve those dreams. And look what he did. He did it. Incredible. Amazing. Well, so I think we all need people to believe in our dreams. We all need Absolutely. great teachers like, like you. you. I think that all of us can agree that there has been one or two teachers in our lives that is, has changed the trajectory of what we have done, and you were that teacher for so many. Thank you so much. You were really phenomenal. Oh, thank you. you really thank you are. so much for having me on this. And teach us show. exactly what to I do know. to make our children see you. <laughs> I'm getting your book. Independent. <laughs> independent. <laughs> Buy the book. <laughs> How to raise successful people is available wherever books are sold, and you can get even more information about Esther at HallmarkChannel.com and, of course, on her website. Yes.